I do what I do because I've seen God's power transform my own life, and He will do it for you. The key to everything is found in God's Word. I'm Joyce Meyer, and I believe that God can heal you everywhere you hurt. Welcome to Enjoying Everyday Life. We've all experienced the pressure of this question, what is my purpose? Well, today I believe we can help lift some of this pressure off of you. Joyce, Aaron Cluley, Jay and I continue a conversation we began here yesterday and it is very enlightening. So let's talk it out. There are different there's different seasons mm -hmm. that God has for us and yeah. not one of us sitting here or anybody watching. I mean, I think I know what I'm going to be doing mm -hmm. for the next 10 years, but I don't know for sure. Right. sure. You know, things are always yeah. changing and we're making a mistake if we, we just let this bother us too much. I mean, I think I know enough about God by now to know that if I want to do what he wants me to do, he will always tell me what that is when he's ready, and I don't have to. I don't have to figure that out. I think that people trying to figure it out so much, they actually end up many times missing. Yeah, yeah. What God is trying to say to them. Yeah. I've discovered that when God wants to say something, He knows how to make Himself heard. That's true. He finds a way, <laughs> doesn't He? He finds a way to tell us. So, what, practically speaking, here, both of what you just said is really good. So, if you think you've heard God tell you something like I feel like this is what he's calling me to do but then that's all he gives you like you're gonna go teach north south east and west and mm -hmm. then he says nothing else what do you do with that <laughs> do I just sit there and like wait or what is your you do what he told you to the first time he told you but what there what is it was it like really specific or like what if you don't get a lot of clear direction well i didn't have any clear direction when god said take your ministry and go north south east and west so do you just I do mean, the best you can with what you know i just i just simply did what i felt to do i started a meeting in north st louis one mm -hmm. in west st louis mm -hmm. and you know I, I really when i look back it's like people always want to know well how do you do this and how do you do that and how do you do this you just start taking steps, and mm -hmm. you follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and you find out, well, this isn't going to work. Well, this is. And, yeah. yeah. You know? You just keep trying. You just, yeah, you just keep <laughs> trying. Moving forward. That, yeah. that was, that's the whole movement. And adapt, right? Yeah, and, 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 and that's the biggest thing that I've learned recently is adapting and accepting when something, when I've outgrown something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. You know, and accepting, like, Okay, like stop trying to squeeze into those jeans. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> I accept that season is over. <laughs> yeah. Just buy a Just bigger Just buy size. a pair of jeans that actually fit. No one's going to see the number inside but you. And if you don't like the number, cut it out. You know? yeah, like, right. That's what scissors are to, for. That's what scissors are for <laughs> to help yeah. you feel better about your life choices. But, <laughs> but no, like, seriously, it, I've, I've taken it even that simple to say, like, it's okay if it doesn't fit anymore. Like, right. not just sure. clothes. I'm talking about, like, if, if what I used to do doesn't fit anymore and if it comes back, mm -hmm. you know, and that that's one of the things that I know a lot of people that have different talents and different gifts don't know which ones to use at yeah. that time. Like, it's like, do I sing right now? Do I speak? Do I write? What do I do? You know, like, yeah. and it's like, what's my purpose? All of it. He, he, he puts it. You know, the desires in your hearts and the gifts in your, in your you know, in mm -hmm. you, for, because he expects a return on the investment. That's something I'm just learning to accept. And I'm like, if I get a song that God wants me to write, I'll just write it, you know. But if he doesn't, because sometimes I go through droughts where I can't, I don't even want to listen to music, you know. So it's <laughs> like, I, I don't do that. And so then I'll use a different gift that God's mm -hmm. given me. And I'm, I am learning. One thing I know for sure um, that divorce has taught me. <laughs> is to not hold on to things so tightly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's good. Like and and be It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. But I've learned that and I'm still learning it. Mm. But I live life a lot more hmm. ease with a lot more ease. <laughs> and right. you know and just like I trust that God's got a plan and as long as I'm still moving and breathing, I'm going to keep moving forward and even if I fail, I'm not as afraid afraid of failure anymore. Yeah. 
Because well, sometimes like your that. person is being led by the Holy Spirit, and they don't even know it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, you just feel like you're just going about your business, just doing this simple little thing. Maybe you, whatever, you know, you go to the store, and you don't realize that you're in the plan of God going to the store, exactly. and you just yeah. happen to run into a certain person mm-hmm. that happens to, you know. I mean, like I've had people say to me, Oh my gosh, the very fact that I ran into you today, this this is confirmation to me about this, yeah. that, or you know, something else. And so we just say it again. Everybody needs to calm down <laughs> yeah. about this funny. and just breathe a little and just be. Mm-hmm. I think God's called us to be, not to do. And if you want to do what God wants you to do, he will show you what it is. Yeah. And like you said, let go of things when God's finished with them. You know, he. there may be somebody watching right now that your purpose right now is to raise three kids. Well, when when they're raised and grown and gone, then God may probably will have you doing something else. And yeah. so I love so much that failure does not mean failure of purpose. No. Right. When yeah. you try something and it doesn't go the way, like you said, there have been so many times that I thought God told me to do this and yet mm-hmm. it didn't work. Mm-hmm. But... Often God is using that failure to teach me something I needed to learn Mm -hmm. or to direct me to the place I needed to be Mm -hmm. for the next thing. And so that I'm so grateful for that because Mm -hmm. failure, nobody likes it. It can be so painful. But it doesn't mean that we've missed God always. uh, Well, like John Maxwell says, you fail forward. Right, exactly. I think that all of us fail on our way towards success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, it, it's just part of it. You can, and if you're so afraid of failure, then you're really never going to find out anything about what you're supposed yeah. to do because you can't. You're not going to get it right 100 percent mm-hmm. of the time. Yeah, and it bothers us a lot more than it bothers God. Sure. <laughs> right before we came here, you you spoke in our chapel for um, employees, and so you were talking about the anointing of God, and and I thought one thing that was really good in that that struck out or stuck out to me was that. For myself, as a type A personality who just wants to go, go, go and get stuff done, if I think I hear God saying something, I'm just going to like, we're just going to go. <laughs> but there's a balance in that between running in my own strength mm-hmm. to get done what I think He's calling me to or waiting, like you said, for the anointing. And if I have that on whatever this thing is, you can't miss it. You can't get away from that. Yeah. So I, I know for myself I have to watch for that balance of... Well, a lot of times God calls you to do things and you don't do them for years and years and years. I mean, David was anointed to be king 20 years before he wore the crown. Hmm. Yeah, that's a long time to wait. (laughs) That's a long time to wait. And those those years, those 20 years he waited weren't very pleasant either. Mm -hmm. I mean, King Saul was trying to kill him the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. So you just because, you know, you can have something in your heart, Mm -hmm. but you you need to not try to make it Mm -hmm. happen. You know, you can you can try to go forward, but if it's obvious that God mm-hmm. is not opening a door, you don't want to try to kick one down. Yeah, yeah. you want to wait for His plan and purpose. Yeah, and, yeah I, I, I noticed timing. that too. Yeah, because sometimes you need that time to rest, even mm-hmm. to prepare for what's coming next. You know, exactly. like, and that's something I had to learn the hard way too. It's like because I would just try to keep pushing forward, be sure. like, "This is the purpose. This is the purpose," and I ruin it or you know you know like mm-hmm. not the full purpose but I'll I end up possibly hurting people's feelings sure, I end yeah. up being good because I'm tired and grouchy and <laughs> mean to people on the way you know mm-hmm. and and I end up messing it up ultimately and sure. where like we all do yeah, yeah. And so mm-hmm. I I think it's important for people to understand like if you're in that season where you're still kind of like tick tock tick tock don't know <laughs> what to do next it's maybe it's a time for you to say la <laughs> like have a moment of rest right. and and not too long because I've taken that rest. But when you really know that God's called you to do something, you you can't sit too long, like with yeah. you, because you feel like a parked car. Like, and I felt like wasted purpose. It's like, come on now, it's time to get up. But yeah. I've I've learned how to rest more. Yeah. Like, and I like yeah. this. Just once you go through certain things, it just make you makes you like, I really want God. I want at the end of the day when I get. To, to heaven for God to look at me and really say, well done. Like, mm-hmm. I want him to look at that list of things that he had for me to do. I'm like, hey, hey, you did a lot of these. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to do all of them. But like, yeah. you know, like you did a lot of these instead of being like, well, you only did a couple. Like, 
that's a like I know that God's put a lot inside of me mm-hmm. and I want to make him proud and I want to yeah. fulfill the purpose I have in life. But like I said earlier, I think it's so refreshing for even someone like me that's that's type A as well that wants to get things done. Mm-hmm. And I don't like failure. I'm accepting it, it more now. But to hear hear like yeah. all of you talk about like how OK it is for you not to hit a home run every time. Oh, that's not true, though. I mean, we want to feel that way. <laughs> but I'm so glad we know that it's true, but it's still, it I mean, still yeah. is so painful. It hurts. I, I know, but I'm saying, like, to even hear the, the, like, Joyce even say that she tried to work with kids and it didn't work. You know, yeah. like, people feel bad about that kind of stuff. And, and it's, but it's okay to try things and it not work. Because oh, yeah. our egos, we don't want to fail. Right. We want to win. We want to, brag about the fact that we did it well, you know, so. Well, you know, we get into, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? And first of all, Mm -hmm. God just wants us to be, he wants a relationship with us. He wants us to enjoy every day that he's given us and just be a blessing everywhere that we go. And, you know, sometimes, to be honest, that's all it is. Yeah. I mean, there there may be people that will live their whole life, just Mm -hmm. be a blessing everywhere you go, love God, worship him. What a wonderful thing. Praise yeah. him. You know, I mean, that's, you know, we, we just we just get too caught up in what yeah. am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? And then uh, what were you guys saying about God's perfect and his permissive will? Is that, that something? Was, that was me. Because that was something I heard a lot, like, <laughs> growing up. You know, you want to be in the perfect will of mm-hmm. God and versus the permissive will of God. And so... Well, I guess it's something we don't have to figure out. He'll tell us. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why I love you. Because everything I was taught growing up, you like, well, I mean, I guess we'll figure it out later. I don't know. Like, I love that, though. You know, I just went through so much of that that it just about drove me crazy. I mean, and I finally learned that, you know, frustration equals works of the flesh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and God wants us to work, but he does not want our works of the flesh, which is us trying to do what only God can do. Yeah. And yeah. I can't make myself know mm-hmm. <laughs> what yeah. only God knows. Yeah. All I can do is get up every day and love him and be his child and Yeah, you know, that's really true. Go about doing yeah. what I think he I mean a, a lot of things that God wants us to do are simple things. Yeah. You know, they're just mm-hmm. they're just simple things and you know if it's is it God's perfect will? Is it permissive will? I don't, you know. Yeah. I, I've heard you talking about how important it is when we're talking about wanting to hear from God and knowing our purpose and seeking Him to to really spend time with Him, to, mm. to be in the Word, yeah. because that's where He tells us those things. And it's not as obvious as, you know, take this job and mm-hmm. now go start this business, at, you know, whatever it may be. It's not always that specific, but something interesting. Um, Tim and I have two daughters, mm-hmm. and when, especially when they were younger, not not as much now because, you know, relationships change, but when they were younger, they communicated in very different ways. Mm-hmm. And so our youngest daughter, Morgan, um, we knew what was always on our mind. Um, you know, we we talked a lot, and, and she would share what was going on in her heart, and and I was able to hear all those things. Um, our other daughter, Taylor, was a little bit more reserved and more quiet. But what I realized was for me to have that connection and communication with her, I had to be there when she was ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I had to be listening when she was ready to talk. Yeah. And she would come into my bedroom late at night, and we just sit on the bed and talk for a long time about things that were important to her. And I find that so much of our wanting to hear from God hmm. is that way. I have to be quiet and ready yeah. to hear Him when right. He's ready to talk. And it's not because He's trying to withhold anything. Sometimes He's waiting for our spirit to be ready. Mm-hmm. But have understanding that relationship that God wants us to know what's on His mind. Mm-hmm. He's not trying to keep anything from us. Yeah. But sometimes it takes a quiet spirit, like yeah, you're saying, yeah. to rest mm-hmm. in Him sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, we have to give Him the chance to talk to us. I know I can be running so fast all the time that He's going to have to knock me down in order to get me <laughs> to <laughs> listen. <laughs> exactly. I don't want Him doing that. So I want to stop and, yeah. and be ready when He wants to talk so that I can hear His right. voice. Well, I'm going to say something that may throw everybody for a loop. So let's just. I love it when you do that. Let's just get into something. Let's get into it. A little bit out there. (laughs) I think that a lot of times 
God just wants you to do what you want to. Oh, whoa. <laughs> I Mind blowing. Unexpected. <laughs> See? It's like, I, no, I, feel I agree. That, I feel I agree. that now. I never would have thought that. I mean, I feel huh, it now. You know I feel why? Like, yeah. Because we have his spirit. Yeah. So what we want a lot of times mm -hmm. is just what he wants. Yeah. You know, it's like I raised four children. And I don't feel the need to tell them everything that they need to do now. They have my spirit. They have my heart. And, you know, they need to be making their own decisions. And yeah. I, don't, I don't think that God wants us to tell us, you know, now eat an apple, don't eat an orange or, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love that. I think a lot of times he just, you know, there, there are things that God Put it like this, you know, maybe instead of finding out what God wants you to do, maybe you need to have a little more freedom and just begin doing things and trust God to stop you mm -hmm. if, if, you're, you're, yeah. if you're not. See, because it, it's about your heart. Yeah. If your heart's right toward God, I don't want to do anything God doesn't want me to do. Yeah. Yeah. But if he's not saying anything and I need to do something, then I need to just, well, what do I want to do? Yeah. You know, and, and go do it. And if it's not right, trust him to stop me. I love that. <laughs> That's blowing my mind. Actually, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to think about that one for a while. It feels so against what we've been taught. <laughs> Not that it's, it's just that, it's that there's such freedom in that. Yeah. Because you know, that takes obviously the pressure he doesn't off. want you to go sin if you want to sin. Sure. That's not what I'm talking about. But like, about, I know but, the difference as a follower of Christ. I know what the yeah, difference is. Yeah, you know is. what the word says. Yeah. You know, yeah. you, you've you got God's heart. He mm -hmm. doesn't have to tell you. Yeah. yeah. You know, when a, when a kid is little, yep. you have to tell them everything. Mm -hmm. Even everything. You have to tell them everything. But... The older they get, the more well, freedom mm -hmm. you want to give them mm -hmm. and the more liberty you want to give them because you have taught them. Yeah. And we've been taught. We know right from wrong. We don't, we don't have to have an instruction about every... Let me tell you something. I know the minute that I'm doing something God doesn't want me to do. Yeah. I mean, I feel it. I feel his conviction, don't you? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Know. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Definitely. You know that. I know when I'm watching something on television I shouldn't be watching. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I know to turn the thing off. It's yeah. like, you know, I don't, what do you, what do you need to watch that for? I, I, it's not going to do you any good. So right. I, yeah. I turn it off. It's like, I don't, you know, show me, show me what, I, what to watch. What should I watch? <laughs> show me what to watch. <laughs> you know, we just, we need to relax, yeah. and breathe, and enjoy God. And not make such a, even like this thing about God's perfect will and God's permissive will. I don't, you know, I don't even know where that came from. Right. But, you know, all I know is God loves us and he's going to let us know if we love him, yeah. he loves us. If we love him mm -hmm. and we want what he wants, he is going to make sure that we know what it is, even if we are a little hard of hearing or thick headed, sure. he'll get he'll yeah. get through yeah, to really us and show us. Too. Uh, Matthew six says, "Seek first mm -hmm. his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added." Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's the things right. that yeah. he gives us that that vary. I I love what you're saying because those are the things that he wants to lavish on us because he's a good parent who loves us. Yeah. Yeah. We want to give such good things to our kids, mm -hmm. and you know God. God knows so much about who we are and what we can accomplish. We don't know that as parents for our kids. But when we begin to see what they love and their yeah. desires, mm -hmm. you know, we love nourishing those mm -hmm. things in them. And God's the same way in us. Yeah. I, you light I, yourself in Him and He will give you the yeah. desires of your heart. Yeah, yeah I, I truly do believe what, what you're saying. Like, I, as my daughter gets older, um, she's 19 now. And as she grows, I delight in seeing her make decisions right. for herself that even maybe I may not have even chosen for her had she had asked me for my opinion. But seeing her make decisions for herself that are going to push her in the right direction like that as a parent, that makes me yeah. smile. And I, yeah. I can only imagine that God smiles at us when he sees us like, ah, that's my girl. You know, she's she's going in the right direction because I, I know how it makes me feel as a parent. I, I thought about even with with you saying that you knew that God told you that you needed to teach and, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and reach people. But you know how like, I knew that? I, I knew that because that's that's what fit. Yeah. You know, that's what I was was good at. I yeah. mean, I, the first person that I led to the to the Lord 
I felt like he just said to me, you're going to leave her that way. And I thought, well, what am I supposed to do to her? I don't know what to do with her. Right. And that was when God put it in my heart mm. to teach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The teacher. And I, thought, I said, I don't know how to do that. He said, I know that, but I do. You know? And so... <laughs> Uh, yeah. And when we say he said, he said, he said, it's, you know, it's, it's a knowing, you, it's a knowing, it's yeah. a whisper in your heart. It's that still small voice. And, uh, you know, of course, I've been at this for a long time now. So I, I get it. You know, people get all uptight about all these things, you know, and <laughs> I'm just kind of done with that. You know, I'm just Is like, that what I look like to you? <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, Aaron, calm down. Aaron, <laughs> I just know that I love God and he loves me and I want to do what he wants me to do. And, you know, I know when I'm done here, I'm going to go buy a lamp and then I'm going to go home and I'm going to eat. And I don't know what I'm going to do after that, but whatever it is, I'm going to enjoy it. I love that. Yeah. But the thing is, like, even with that, you've trusted God. You didn't know, like you said earlier, like Dave was calling to see about radio and then yeah. you ended up being on TV and who, who, who would have thought like, and now we're speaking to millions of people through a podcast that also gets right. on a show. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think God, you know, has to speak all the details of the Wouldn't how. that be terrible if he it'd did? Be yeah. <laughs> Overwhelming. <laughs> if he showed you all of it, it'd be like, whoa. But he trusts, he trusts yeah. what you like, that you trust God, that you trust him and he, you trust the people that you've, you know, trusted your ministry to as well to make certain decisions. It just goes into trust. It's not, it's, I'm just saying. Trust just, is a big part of this. It's just that simple thing of like, God trusts us. Like we trust him. Yeah. And he's like, I trust you're going to get to the finish line. Like, I think more than trying to figure it out. It's just doing what you, what you think or feel that you should do after having prayed about it. Right. Trusting God that mm-hmm. if you are going in the wrong direction, that he will get you back on the right path. I remember one time I was trying so hard to figure out what God wanted me to do. But God, what if I miss you? What if I miss you? What if I miss yeah. you? What if I miss you? And clearly he spoke in my heart, if you miss me, I'll find you. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and Mic <yeah>. drop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're done. And yeah. I have to give it to you. Like, one thing that I, like, I've used as like a, a guidance when I'm a little confused or like, God, am I, I'm going to miss you if I'm not. I know the devil's not going to tell me to help anybody. Like, no, that's so, true. Right. You know, that's so a safe bet. It's, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like, I don't know if I should, Lord, should I do this to help the kids? I mean, maybe it's not your thing, but it's okay to try it because mm-hmm. Satan's not going to tell you to go help kids or help the homeless or, right. you know, it, or do certain yeah. things that are going to bless people. Like, that's not, Satan's not the author of like love helping people, yeah. things, to love people. So even if you take a risk and a chance yeah. on on something you don't have to stress over God it. God says, oh, no, <laughs> loving people was not my purpose for you. I think that you. was from the devil. No, that's not from the devil. <laughs> that was a safe That's a it's safe, safe one to try. Yeah. You know, God gives us a lot more freedom, I think, than what we think that he does because we yeah. have his spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his yeah. spirit is in us. So mm. we, we know more sometimes than we think we know, yeah. you know, because we've got his heart. I had a thought this morning just as we were getting ready for this that when, when I— for myself speaking, when I am desperate to find out what my purpose is, it's because I want to feel good. And I want, it makes me feel important to know I have a purpose. And God kind of showed me, like, flip that around to think about, like, what is my purpose for you? Like, how do I feel about you? How, what does God say about who I am in Him? And if I can flip my perspective to who He says I am and who He says He is in my life, it does exactly what you're saying. It flips my perspective to whatever you want me to do today, I will mm-hmm. do. I'll help mm-hmm. who you want. I'll love who you want. And then the rest he takes care of. Yeah. Right. But it's good. I, I love watching our, our children find their purpose. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love watching and, and you know, they're trying different things. They're not always succeeding. They're, they're growing and they're not going to disappoint me. Because they're trying. Yeah. Right. And God, I, I know how much He delights in all of us mm-hmm. when we're trying to please Him. If we're trying to hear His voice, if we're trying to find His purpose for us, we cannot fail yeah. right. because our desires, yeah. and like you said, our heart is in the right place. So right. don't be a parked car. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really important thing. We hope you've been encouraged a little bit. Thank you all very much. I think this has been so helpful, it's really so good. Purposeful.
Good. <laughs> now, oh, well, nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> now my purpose is to get something to eat because I'm oh, hungry. That's right. <laughs> and to buy a lamp. Buy a lamp. Buy a buy a lamp. lamp. <laughs> Beyond that, I don't know. <laughs> we'll just limit, see really. what happens. I don't have a clue. We'll yeah. trust God and we'll see everyone next time. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Have you been looking for a 365-day devotional? Well, look no further than the Promises for Your Everyday Life devotional from Joyce Meyer. There's a focus verse for all 365 days of the year, along with a prayer starter. Get your copy of Promises for Your Everyday Life devotional at joycemeyer.org slash 365devo. The biggest thing that we need to do is learn how to think like God thinks. And the only way you can do that is by knowing the Word of God. In Words to Live By, Joyce Meyer shares how studying the Word of God transformed her life. Experience a deeper and more meaningful relationship with God through the captivating collection of verses in this beautiful hardcover book by Joyce Meyer. Discover the transformative power of His Word. Words to Live By from Joyce Meyer. Get your YouTube exclusive offer today. Go to joycemeyer.org slash words and the number two. Have you ever been trapped in a never-ending frenzy where every passing moment feels like a blur, leaving you gasping for a chance to pause and catch your breath? In her insightful book, Pursuing Peace, Joyce Meyer explores the importance of seeking peace at all costs. This beautiful hardcover edition is filled with meaningful scriptures and uplifting quotes from Joyce, providing valuable guidance for living a peaceful lifestyle. So grab a cup of coffee, find a comfortable spot, and embark on your journey to find peace. Remember, this limited-time YouTube offer won't last long. Go to joycemeyer.org pursuit to get your copy today and start your pursuit of peace. The mind actually is the battlefield. That's where we win or lose the war with Satan. He said all he gets to say. <laughs> he says, the rest, says, of, the rest, of, the rest of the day is mine. <laughs> you start asking God to heal you and he will restore. He's the God of all comfort. And I am so grateful that I know how to call on God.